Big up your head, big up your body Get on the bus, it's time to party It's Gregory, it is a Saturday night Gregory Take your socks off and take your pants on Get in the car and drive Hello, uh, alright, welcome to Friday Night Greg Friday Night Energy on a Wednesday morning We got a great guest today I'm very excited. We will bring him in. Well, he's not here yet. When he gets here, then you'll know. But I wanted to get through some business first. I want to talk a little bit with my boy, Maxi. Hey, how's it going? Um, how you doing, Max? I'm great. How are you? How's the lady? The lady's good. Yeah? What, you do anything new sexually? <laughs> yeah. No, no, nothing new sexually. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, you know, get in there. Yeah, I will. Anything you want to do that you haven't done yet? No, I'm not that adventurous, you know? I'm uh, it's just... What are you doing? Just, just standard, standard, standard moves. Just two people looking at each other, standing up. Well, never looking at each other. Oh, yeah. oh what? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you got to do the no blink sex. Yeah. You ever do that? No, but I had, um, I recorded a podcast years ago for a Trump supporting rabbi. Yeah, of course. And uh, he was once like, uh, he said something about how he was like, I'm going to tell you a secret, uh -huh. a Jewish secret. Ooh. And it was basically just how you should look your partner in the eyes when you have sex. And I was like, I don't think that's a Jewish secret or a secret. I think that's just, I think that's nothing. No, it is a thing. He's onto something. Yeah. It's called the no blink sex. Yeah. What I do is you stand in front of her. She stands in front of you. You. No one's allowed to sit. No one's allowed to bend over. Complete like 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 an eleven, right? The number yeah. eleven. Yeah. Stare each other in the eyes. Not allowed to look at her vagina. She's not allowed to look at your dick. And then you try to get it in without breaking eye contact. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very fun. Yeah. You got to poke around. She's got to poke around. And you can't use your hands. Oh, no hands? It's, you're an 11. You're not a T. Yeah, that's true. It's not soccer. If you become it a T. Soccer. It's a, yeah, no soccer rules, man. Yeah. All right? So you try that. Uh, and then you just come however you can. Yeah. If you just got to rub it on her thigh, rub it on her thigh. Yeah. So you're going to do that for me? <laughs> I will. You got to say, um, do we use your girlfriend's real name? Oh, uh, yeah. You can say <laughs> yeah, Rebecca. Yeah. Say Rebecca. Uh, uh, Greg wrote this note that said he's going to fire me from the podcast unless we do the no the no eye sex no eye sex eleven a no blink. It's called the eleven. Yeah, the eleven. The no blink sex. Yeah. Um, I'll do. Oh, it. that's good. Yeah. How long are you guys together now? Uh, just over two years. Oh, gross. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, do you love her? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you say it like that? Yeah, I do. I mean, you say, ask me if I love my wife. Do you love your wife? Yes. Now let me ask you again. Do you love your you love your lady? Yes. No. Ask me. Do you, do you love your wife? Yes. You must be authoritative. Yeah. See? Again, not. Well, I'm not authoritative with anything. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I Gotta don't... be, man. Yeah. Pull your dick out. Yeah. Not now. That's authoritative. Yeah, it shows authority. Yeah. How do you think Bill Clinton got in office? That's true. He did do that a lot. He showed his dick to people. Yeah. I like let me tell you this, man. This is a rule I've been saying for years. How many pubes you got? That's how much of a man you are. If I do a job interview, someone shows up the interview, I go, remember how I interviewed you? What was the first thing on my mouth? How many pubes you got? 106. Yeah. 1,000. No pubes, not a man. Yeah. Show me your pubes. Yeah. How many pubes you got? Me? Like just 42. <laughs> you just, no, you don't, you don't tell me a number. You show me. Don't show oh. me because I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be the weaker man here. <laughs> yeah. This is for everyone. Whenever yeah. you're in a job interview... And that guy tries to interview you. Hey, why are you here for the job? You go, oh, why am I here for the job? How many pubes you got? Flip it on him. Is he a man? Men have pubes. Long pubes. What are you looking at over there? I feel like you're you poking around. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing board stuff. What are you boarding? I'm boarding. Well, well, I'm just getting, the, just getting, I'm just wearing on the levels. It's a little, a little hot. A little, am I a little hot? A little hot. That's good now. All right. So something I do want to talk about. Yeah. This is for everybody. My special is coming out very soon. Oh, that's exciting. I finished all of my... I finished all of my editing. I'm just waiting on them. Nice. Uh, the good news is it's very good. That's good. <sighs> the bad, there's some bad news. Okay. Uh, I really want to get this thing. I really want to release this thing on 9-11. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be done in time. You don't think it'll be done in time for 9-11? I guess that is coming up. Yeah. Do you think that do you think people will be offended if I'm like, 9-11 is back, Greg Stone special? I want that, That's the hook. 9-11 is back. We're taking back the day. Yeah. You don't know? forget. Don't forget the special drops. It used to be sad. Yeah. Now it's happy. Yeah. 9-11 is back. Yes. Special's dropping. Something's dropping on 9-11. It's not buildings. Nah, they already fell. <laughs> I think this is a big hook. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I think the other thing is you uh, you release it on 9-11, and then when people are like, why would you do that? Be like, oh, I had no idea. It's like, oh, and then you like play it off. I mean, well, you know you know what else came out on 9-11, right? I think I know. Uh, the Blueprint, Jay-Z's album. Of course, I knew that. 2001, 9-11. That's the only the thing 9/11. I remember. Yeah, that's, that's the thing to remember from that day. I just want, I, I love the idea of being like, when people are like, whoa, you know something happened on that day. And I go, yeah, the Blueprint. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what else? You know something else? And I go, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. No. I've never heard of it. I'm from New Jersey. I would know about this. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I'm excited about it. I don't know if it's funny, though. It was funny. It was funny in person. You were there? Yeah. I remember you were there. Yeah. You're my fucking boy. <laughs> yeah, I was there. I would love to fire time. you, but I can't because I love you too much. Yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my trick. I know. You get people to like you. Yeah. That's a terrible thing. <laughs> um, That's pretty fun. Yeah. That's what else is like, going on. I'm also thinking about, um, did I tell you I got an application in? For what? Well, uh, <laughs> Topcom. <laughs> Topcom? Yeah. It's like Top Gun. Yeah. It's the only the elite sexual men. Oh, yeah. They they contacted me and they didn't want to. They didn't want me. They were like, it, he, the guy calls me. He goes, it pains me to do this, but you're out of here. Yeah. They want you at Top Come. The rules of Top Come. Guess what they are? Uh, don't talk about Come Club. No, that's 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 Come Club. Yeah, that'd be it's Come a different Club. club. That's, yeah, that's where, different. It's a whole other thing. Top Come is the elites. Yeah, Come Club is just people who are like really into Come and they swap Come and they're like. Uh, they're more into cum than they are sex. Yeah, top cum is you just have to like cum while flying a fighter jet. What? While flying a fighter jet? No, top cum is the top sexual men okay. in the industry. Yes. Rule number one, you cannot have a sexual orientation. You <laughs> must be open to everything. Cool. So what they do with top cum, cum is they do the most advanced sexual moves, things no one's willing to try. Now, what they asked me to do, and I don't know, you tell me how you feel about this, because this isn't a thing. I'm married, so I'd have to run this by my wife. I'm like, I'm out of the top come game. Yeah. But he calls me, and he was like, you know, he goes, uh, do you know Jada Williams? And I was like, yeah, Jada Williams. She was, uh, born on, uh, she was born on New Year's at the stroke of midnight. This is, well, you know how baby people are born, like the first baby ever born? Yeah. She was the first baby ever born, literally at the stroke of midnight. Turns out, she's turning 18 this year. Top Cum wants me to have sex with this woman. Yeah. I'm sorry, he's a boy. It's a boy. Okay. But I never see uh, gender. Uh, they want me to fuck this guy. Yeah. The minute he turns 18. Yeah. Because this is be the newest advanced sexual move. But I don't know that I can I can do that. I got to turn a guy gay. Yeah. I got to. Do you be, know he's not gay? He's so far, everything I read is it's so far, it says straight or undetermined. Okay. Um, for, it's very young. I don't really like that, but they're like, it's fine because this is, you know, it's legal. They want me to be coming at midnight. Oh, okay, yeah. And I don't think I'm into this. Well, that means you need to come in the first minute, or well, but I also need to be inserting within the first minute. I also need to be. I can't hit on a guy who's 17. No. So I have to see. This is how insane this move is. I have to meet him at 12. Yeah. And before 1201, seal the whole deal. Yeah, and finish. And finish. Yeah, because if, if, uh, if, if you even talk to him at uh, 1159, you're a groomer. You're a groomer. Yeah. No and if I come at 1201, it was all for nothing. Cheated on my wife and had sex with someone way too young. Yeah. So I'm thinking about passing, but man, Top Cum is very, you know, it's intriguing to be among the elites. It's, it's hard to resist. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's how they get you. I know. want to be included. I know. Also, it's just like I'm not gay. I don't yeah, like young people. Issue. Yeah, that's an issue. There's a whole. There's so many things that you you, you, you know that I just don't sync up for me. Yeah. Well, sometimes you need to you need to make sacrifices. But my name on that placard would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> your name on anything is good. That's the thing. Maybe I should just get myself a placard at a trophy store. Yeah. No, I mean if that's the anything un- un- we learned from Trump is that uh, it feels good to have your name on things. That was like his whole thing. What's he got his name on? A buildings. Is he in Top Gun? Can you Google it? <laughs> Yeah, I'll Google his Trump and Top Cum. <laughs> I want the Top Cum hat. Uh, yeah, what's it say? Uh, the first thing is, was Trump really a top student at Wharton? Right. So I don't think he's in Top Cum. No, I don't think so. What's Wharton? Is that a sexual school? That was uh, that's the business school at UPenn. Oh. And I think he went there for undergrad, but I think he didn't really do the business school. So I think everything's kind of a lie. 
Let me have an honest to God conversation with you. Yeah. No bits. Yeah. Answer these straight. Yeah. Would you ever jerk a guy off? I don't think so. Okay. Great. Great place to land. Now let me let's let's up it. Yes. Right. Would you? What would you rather? Okay. Jerk a guy off or get jerked off? If, I mean, by a guy. By a guy. Um, I think probably I'd rather get jerked off by a guy, right? Cause really? Because then, then you can at least like close your eyes and be like, no, this is a woman. But you can't pretend. You can't pretend you're, you're stroking a woman off. I see this absolutely differently. Okay. If I'm getting jerked off, that's like, ah, I feel weird. I'm like, ah, this guy's doing it's all his work. If I'm jerking a guy off, at least I'm giving pleasure. At least I'm like, I'm a comedian. You know what I mean? Yeah. I liked, I'd like to, uh, I think I could jerk a guy off just because it's going to make him happy. If some guy came up to me and was like, hey, man, I had a hard week. Could you just jerk me off? <laughs> I'm a giver. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Yes. You turns out, and my, I, I got to shoot the shout out to my boy Mike because me and my, my friend Mike were talking about this last night. Dr. Mike. Doctor. Turns out you have a magical hand. Okay. And you jerk you, anytime you jerk only a man off. Yeah, they will have the best world changing orgasm in their life. Uh huh. What do you do? Does it work on me? Huh. Yes, it does work on you. You can have that. I'll give it to you. Um, I would hoard it, or I would, or you know what I would do? I would um. I don't know. I might just hoard it. I might be selfish. You're not gonna. You're not gonna give out your gift. <laughs> God gave you a gift. Yeah, like the best, the best hand job giver. You're the, you're gonna make. Pe- I'll say this, man. You could go to hospice. Yes. And you could just jerk off all these people in hospice. Yeah. Make all of them have the best pleasure of their life. I'll do it for people in hospice. That's why. That's why you're still the producer here because you're a good man. Yeah, in hospice, that's different. For how about this? Yeah. For every ten guys you jerk off. Yeah. You can make a woman come the best she's ever come in her life. You get one for every 10. Okay. Do you do 10? This is going to be a great thing for your girlfriend, Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca, I'm just kidding. I was just a bit. I don't want um, her to hear this and get upset. She doesn't listen to my podcast. No. No, and I've, 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 I've told her. I've told her that I was like, look, we're in a rough patch. Really, the only thing that can save this relationship is for you to listen to Friday Night Greg. She and she still won't? No, she won't do it. Well, that's not very nice. No. Am I, is the podcast not that good? No, she 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 likes it a lot, but she's it's it's just about defying me. Defying you? Yeah, she's, This is why you got to show your pubes. Yeah, she was like, "I like the podcast, but because you're telling me to listen, I just won't." And I was like, "This is insane." Well, tell her don't to listen. Oh, you got me. You got it. I think Tell you her it. don't listen to this episode. We talked about you and you'd be very upset. <laughs> now, back to the question. Yes. What was the question? You can the, jerk oh, off 10 10 to 1. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-ask all these questions to our guests when he gets here, I think. You get 10 guys you jerk off. Yes. Then one, you, you can make a woman come the best she's ever come in her life. So you're jerking the 10 guys. Uh, question. Yes. Can they be uh, trans women who still have their dicks? Three. <laughs> three of them can? I'll give you three. <laughs> right, then I'll do it. <laughs> Is it a thing? For, is that a big deal? You think you'd? Is it easier for you to jerk a guy off if they're if they're trans women with dicks? I think it would be easier mentally if uh, you looked up and you're just like you saw like long hair and tits, you know. Stop thinking about it, men and women, and start. I think thinking, I'm not <laughs> thinking about think about it as you're doing something nice for someone else. Uh huh. That's why you jerk guys off. <laughs> Yes. You don't do it for your own sexual pleasure. I never have sex for my own pleasure. It's yeah. always their pleasure. Yeah. I could be jerking off so many guys just making people happy. Yeah. But my only issue is that the guys who would take this are creeps. Yes. You know? They'd be all like, yeah. They wouldn't be like, yes, this is fun. Thank you, Greg, for your service. Yeah. They would not. No one would say that. Yeah, no they, one would say that. No, they'd be, they'd, be, they'd be the weirdos, I think. All right, what about this? Okay. For every... Three men you have full intercourse with. Okay. You can have sex with one person of your choosing on the planet Earth, and they're fully, it's all consensual. They're all fully into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
in the well here's here's the question of this and I'll 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 ask you. Uh-huh. If you have to do this, would you with the guy again the same thing? It's like would you rather be doing the fucking or getting fucked? Well, you know me. I'll do anything for anything. Yeah. So you're Would I rather get though. fucked or do the fucking? Well, it depends on the penis size. I don't want to get hurt. Yeah, that's my thing. If I we, think any size would hurt. Yeah, I would rather I'm a small guy. I'd get destroyed by the tiniest dick. I can promise no <laughs> we can, We'll lube you up. Okay. We can promise no significant pain. Yeah. I don't really know how much anal sex works with men. No. Uh, I'd have to do research. I'd have to call friends. Yeah. Uh, who are whatever. But, you know. We can make some calls. Yeah. It's not like pain. It's not like you're not in like full on pain. Yeah. You know. Oh, and you can just have sex with them. Yeah. Do you do it? For every three guys, it's then. And you can choose the guys. Yeah. I don't know why I made it better or easier. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to choose the guys, yeah. All right, what, three guys? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't think famous people. I think I would, I would just go through a catalog and be like... <laughs> this guy, this guy, like a haircut catalog? Like a haircut catalog. And again, it would be like, who's who's the most feminine? Who's the most feminine? You don't want to just try a, a man's man real quick? I don't think so. I don't like Harry. Yeah, I don't like Harry. Um, Even on women. <laughs> especially on women. Yeah. It's like, I don't like hair across the board. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, it would be, yeah. All right, so what three guy, What kind of guy are you going for? Probably, probably, you know, hairless guys that are, like, my size. Hairless guys like you. Okay. Yeah. Like a mouse man. Yeah, like mouse man. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. What about you? Let's get... Which one's with you? Oh, three men? Yeah, what would you... What off, would you the, off the bat, hems... All three Hemsworth brothers. All Hemsworth brothers. Ah, uh, no, I'm gonna do this. Start with the guy who was in Westworld. I'll do the f- the top two Hemsworth brothers. Yeah, not so not Westworld guy. I don't know the Westworld guy. Uh, Chris, I go Chris. Yeah. I go Haim. What's the other one's name? H- Henry. I don't know the one who was the. I go Chris Hemsworth. Fuck it, I'll take one Hemsworth. Well, there's okay. So there's Chris. Chris is the main one. Uh, and then uh, Liam. Liam no, no, I'm out. I'm out on the Hemsworth. Just Chris. Just Chris. I want to throw variation. Give me Tom Holland. I yeah. met him in real life. He's a little guy. Yeah. He's a little cute guy. Yeah. That'd be cute. I like to hang out. You know, maybe we do a little kissing, little, little. I think Chris Hemsworth, I, I think that he's a little bit of a meek. No, he's not meek, you know. I like, he's a little nerdy little guy. Yeah. He's handsome. Yeah. He seems very cool. I go with Spider Man. A little young for me, but whatever, man. It's all fantasy. In, in this fantasy, I'm also young. All right, those two, Chris, both, oh, both Avengers, by the way. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, then I want a wild card. Yeah. I want to do something that I wouldn't expect. So I either go fat or old. I go old. I go uh, Morgan Freeman. Cool. <laughs> that's a good third one. Morgan, sex with Morgan Freeman? Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, he'd narrate the whole thing. Well, there's your penis, Gregory. <laughs> that's not how he talks. No. That's what you can do. But those are my three. Those are good three. And then you can have sex with any woman. What woman? Any woman? Oh man. Um Who was uh who did I just see? I just saw Barbie and Margot Robbie is pretty pretty up there. It's pretty hard to to deny Margot Robbie. Yeah. She is so attractive and such a great actor. Yeah. It's she, wild. She uh how she, beautiful and great actor she is. In an interview she said that she uh has no problem with people being into her feet and that she thinks it's even a little sweet, so she's got that going for her. Let me say this. Are you into feet? I'm not into feet, but... Um, I don't think that's that weird. No. It just doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't do anything for me. I kind of my I kind of don't even want... Some people are like, really want to like suck on feet. I don't even want someone's foot to really touch me. I don't, you know, I don't really be touched by a foot. Oh, yeah, I don't mind. I, like, sucking on someone's foot to me is like sucking on their knee. Yeah. Man, it's got to be clean, but I don't really care. No one's ever asked me to suck on their foot. No, I've never had that asked of me either. Yeah. I think I that's usually something people don't ask. I think that's usually you ask to do it. That's like, you ask a second someone's foot? I think that's how it's like Tarantino. You know, right. Tarantino's into sucking feet. So women don't really like when you suck on their feet. I'm sure they're fine with it, but I don't think it would be their go-to, hey, do this. I don't want to suck on someone's feet. I don't either. Um, Margot Robbie's a good pick. Yeah. I think I would go with one. You know what, man? If I'm being honest, man, everyone's always like, go with the famous people. I think I would go with some porn girl who's just a little dirty. Yeah. You know, I like them thick. Yeah. And just going to be a good time. 
You know, why waste your time on some like actress who's gonna be like, ah, don't, don't make eye contact. Give me some fucking animal. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I know some animals. You have Lisa Ann. Nah, she's too old. Not that she's too old now. She was very in her heyday. In her heyday, she still wasn't my thing. But she's very pretty. Yeah. Um, Sarah Palin. She was Sarah Palin. Who? Oh, you know who's super cute? Mm. The girl on the bear. I like her. Oh yeah. Jenny Slate. Was, Is it Jenny Slate? On the bear? That's not Jenny Slate. She was on SNL. She's a blonde. Elliot. Her last name's Elliot. Maybe. Oh, Abby Elliot. I think Abby Elliot. Yeah, Abby Elliot's cute. I like a good Abby. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's my my pick. Oh, I didn't pick my pick. Just some uh, in so, some OnlyFans lady. Yeah. Just just any one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some Dominican OnlyFans lady. Yeah, that's a good one. Who loves it. Yeah. Who's willing to do wild things. What would you rather have? Sex in a hot tub or sex in the middle of the street? I think the hot tub. All right. I'm, I'm trying to gauge where you're at. Yeah. Um, hot tub was not definitely a, for a high choice, but if it's between that and the middle of the street. Middle of the street, but you don't get in trouble. And you will have an erection no matter what. Just would I or over a hot tub? No, I'm just saying that these are the caveats. You don't have to worry about not getting an erection, and you will not be arrested. Is everyone around just ignoring or, like, cheering me on? It's classic New York, so their reactions are their reactions. Uh, So mostly ignoring. Ignoring, but some people are going, what? Some people go, only in New York. (laughs) Then I would. (laughs) People are standing around saying that every 30 seconds. It's uh, me mostly. Yeah, it's, mostly you. it's me walking by, and I'm the one who made you do this. Like, hey, everybody, <laughs> only in New York. Yeah, yeah, I would do that then. Um, should we real quick? Yeah, we've done like uh, we've been recording for like 20 minutes. I know. We got to uh, let's land the pl- let's bring in our guest. This is editing, so we have to say that even though we're technically yeah. he's not here yet. Yeah. All right. Let me do. Let me just say one more thing, uh-huh. and this might not be a good one. Uh-huh. And it might also be transphobic. I don't know. <laughs> Would you rather have sex with a woman and find out she's a man or a man and find out she's a woman? Not trans. It's magic. It's not trans. It's magic. You've been uh, hypnotized by Dr. Strange, who's really into some really shitty magic these days. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. He's gone off the rails. He's yeah. drinking. Dr. Strange makes you think you're having sex with Margot Robbie. And then as soon as it's done, you find out it was uh, Mojo or The Blob or uh, you don't know either of those people. I mean, if I'm hypnotized to that extent, I yes. feel like... It's magic. Yeah, if it's magic, then I want to think that I'm having sex with Margot Robbie. But the person you have sex with is then in love with you. That's fine. I can, I can, I can detach and just be like... <laughs> and just ignore. So, so here's the thing, right? You think you're having sex with Margot Robbie. Yeah. And then you find out that it's actually Morgan Freeman. Yeah. But then Morgan Freeman is in love with you. Or you're having sex with Morgan Freeman and then realize it's actually Margot Robbie, who's in love with you. Rafi's here. Hey, come on in. We were doing an intro that was supposed to be five minutes, and we ended up doing 30 minutes. Oh, my God. We're going to pause and get to our guest. We're excited. Bye. Be- we'll be back in half a second. Hey, we're here. We're starting. They already know we started. We already did the intro. But I'm so excited here. Uh, we are bringing in, you guys know when I have to do this podcast, I could bring in anybody in the world. Yes. But I only bring in people I love. And this guy. So you love me? No, yeah. That's amazing. No, I'm serious. You're someone who when I see them, I always feel better. I'm so excited to talk to you. Me too. I, lo- I love when you're around. Me, me too. Yeah. You are a guy that I see and I'm like, oh, I'm glad Greg's here. Yes. Ah, that's good. Oh, 100%. Did, was that not clear? No, you was, but I don't know how this I works. I fawn over you. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't, I don't know how it works here. Everybody, I feel like everybody is uh, at least here, you know? Mm-hmm. The comedy mm-hmm. scene, it's kind of friendly. Yeah, but it's it also of, has to be because everyone's uh, a fraud. <laughs> but there is like a superficial friendliness. Uh, okay. But then there's real friendliness. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's, you know, there's bullshit and then there's real shit. Can you see the difference? Yes. Can you? Absolutely. What is a fake friendly move? Hey, love your podcast, 
But when they're looking at you, they're not looking at your eyes. They're looking like this. Like their eyes are a little crossed. Like, hey, so happy to see you. <laughs> and then they see the waitress. Like, hey, so happy to see you. Uh-huh. Hey. So, and nothing ever feels uh-huh. genuine. genuine. They're not like, dude, how the fuck are you doing, man? Uh. And they're not really listening. They're just giving you the, it's like a soundboard. How are you? But one day I said to you, oh, I love the podcast. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, yeah? What did you watch? And I told you exactly what I watched. Yeah. Which was your story at the comedy store. The day you performed at the comedy store, you were nervous. Oh. And then they gave you like five minutes. Yeah. And I watched the whole thing, just you and the microphone. And then you're like, yeah, you watched it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually when people say, and people I trust say, I love your podcast, uh. they're like, oh, I know you have a podcast and I love you. And I saw a clip and I laughed for a second. Okay. Um, and then if people go like, I love your podcast, I listen to every episode, and they're a comedian, I'm like, oh, that's weird. I don't know. You know more about me now than I know about you. <laughs> I like when fans do it, okay. and I like with people who are like, uh, fr- like, re- like real, not comedy f- friends do it. Like I have friends who will listen to my podcast okay. that I've known from high school, and that makes me happy because it's like, whatever. But when a comedian comes up to me, they're like, "I listen to every episode." Uh, I'm do like, you, do "Why?" You, do you think those people from your high school are more close friends than the comedy friends? Yeah. So I have two because they know you for longer. Two or three friends who I've known since high school oh, okay that we still talk two or three times a week we all go on like like they're close close friends and they listen to my podcast and the only thing that's bad about it is that sometimes i'll repeat stories and they're like yeah i know i heard it on the podcast oh uh, yeah and i'm like fuck i don't know what else to talk about now yeah. i used to have a podcast in brazil and i would repeat the same stories too much got to yeah it's okay they don't know them. Uh, they, they, they kind of do yeah you're probably right they're not gonna just say it because they want to hurt your feelings but they're like <laughs> i've heard this shit before <laughs> Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So, okay. So, tell me, tell me. Everything. I got a thing. Okay. So, I just want to explain how I met you. First of all, I didn't realize where I met you. I met you. Do you know where we met first? We met on a diner, 2018. Chris Milhouse introduced us. No. No? It's, okay. I might be fucking this up. Okay. Okay. But you're probably better at dates than I am. We met at Montreal just for laughs. You were on the uh, diversity show with Anthony DeVito. We met before. You don't remember. That was before that? We met before. Millhouse was before that? Yeah. I'm not good with dates, because I remember that, but I just figured this was before it that. It was before. Uh, I think so. I think it was before. Really? Yeah. But yeah, I did the ethnic show. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy, because there's this show in Montreal called the ethnic show, which we, and you think, okay, people from all over the world are going to be there. Yeah. Anthony DeVito was the Italian guy. When he saw the Italian flag, he was like, am I? I didn't know that. He's from New Jersey. It doesn't count. Just because of the last name is enough for you to be ethnic. It's so crazy because I'm as ethnic as he is, but they would never put me on that show. Because you're stone. Well, because my skin color looks this oh, way. Yeah, and also, yeah. They look at Anthony and they go, that's an olive skin boy. That's an Italian. <laughs> and I go, I'm still Italian. Uh-huh. Also, he, uh-huh. um, there it goes, right out the window. No. Whatever I was thinking, it just but left. Do you, the, so you're, you feel you're more Italian than Anthony? I am the exact same amount, the of, same Italian. amount of Italian. We're from the same town. Okay. We went to the same high school. Oh, so you guys were high school buddies. Yes. Oh, that's He's cool. also buddies with those guys I was talking about. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, we're all really close. So um, that's why they watch. There's two buddies in this yes. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Of course they have. Yeah, and they're just supportive, and they're sweet, and they like to laugh. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was the ethnic show. Also, wait, sorry. That's what oh, it was. Tell me. He's all, we're also in, they're saying he's from another country, Italy, but he's also from another country, America, USA. It's in Canada. <laughs> so they're just denying all of the USA and being like Italian. Everybody. It's like he's an American. <laughs> everybody in the whole festival is ethnic, if you think about it. <laughs> Everyone. Is. Everybody. The whole goddamn thing. Yeah. All right. I got to get into this because I don't want to blow the, my load. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> So what I always thought was amazing is that I met you at, uh, met you at wherever, a diner or JFL. Okay, okay. I was like, I love this guy. We've had a really good friendship. Yes, I yes. see you. We talk. I do not know your origin story. <laughs> One day I was on Instagram Live, and if you remember, you signed on, and then all of a sudden, 20,000 people were on this. <laughs> and I went, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then I'm like, ah, you know, whatever. And then we were doing a show at Fat Black, and there was a dude in the crowd you went on, and he was like, Rafi Bustios! He was, he was acting like you were the king of Zamunda. 
He was like, oh, he started like kneeling on the ground. And I went, who the fuck is Rafi? Now, I don't want you to tell me. Okay. I'm going to try to I'm gonna ask you, you a series me, of questions. You told me exactly. Like, I want there's something with you. I don't want to know. I want to bring you to my yes. podcast. <laughs> I told. don't know who you I don't yeah. know your origin story. You know, okay, good, good. That's good. And so I got a couple questions. Okay. I'm going to try to guess. You get tall guy? Yes, guess. Very tall man. I am a tall man, yes. For three points. I can do this. Okay. Is Rafi Bustios? Uh, Bustios? Bastos. Bastos, sorry. Okay. Is Rafi Bastos a famous basketball player? Are you in the NBA? Were you in the NBA? Okay, another another guess. Guess another thing. Let, let me t- tell me the three. Oh no, there's like about okay. 16 of these. Oh, there's 60? Okay. Okay, you want to hold off. You don't have to. Okay, I can okay. answer. Sure. I play basketball until I was 24, 25 years old. Uh-huh. I played pro a little bit. But that's not why I was famous. Okay. Is pro... Sorry to ask Pro. Uh, is it millions of dollars? No, 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 oh, okay. No, no, is, it, no. is it pro NBA, no, no, like no, over no. here? I wasn't, okay. I wasn't good enough to make good money. Okay. I played a little bit. I was never famous because of basketball. Okay. Not no, famous because no. of basketball. No famous because... All right. Oh, you're trying to guess my... What I'm... This is famous. very fun. Yeah, fun. It's fun. It's different. Have you been to jail? Almost. Almost? Yeah. A few times, actually. What? Okay, I'm gonna. Should we hold off on this? Hold off, hold off. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna answer. Yeah. And then we come back and then we analyze things. This is very okay. fun. Okay, good, good. Were you a talk show host? I was. You were a talk show host? I was. <laughs> is that why you're famous? Is it the talk show? Uh, there's a long story that took me to the talk show, but I built a story in Brazil. Uh huh. And at, at the end, I would say I had a talk show, yeah. Almost been to jail. But big bi- story. Were you some kind of drug dealer? <laughs> no, I wish. All right. No. The whole fame uh-huh. is because of TV. TV? Yeah. Okay, so you're getting closer. So talk show, it's... I had a talk show. Right. But I... But that's how it got you there. N- no. You didn't, they didn't give you the talk show, and then you blew up. You got no. the talk show because you were already there. Yes. All right, so... Y- yeah. Was TV the thing? Yes. That blew you up. Yes. Were you on like a? Oh, you're so tall. A real reality TV? <laughs> no, no, never. I could never do it. Actor? I could never do it because one day I went to those houses. Yeah. That they have cameras around. Uh huh. I went to do some kind of a, a stand up. Okay. Just for those people who are living in that, in that house. And then when I left the house, there was a friend of mine working in production, and he said to me. Do never do a show like this. I was like, why? Look at this. And then he showed me pictures of me in the bathroom, cleaning my dick on a, on the toilet. He just showed you your, your own self. Yeah, I was like, fucking, like, like just lost looking it? at my dick in front of the mirror <laughs> and wiping my ass, like, in the middle of the, the fucking, like, putting a t- I did, yeah, I could never do it. Because yeah. 15 minutes later, I was so worried about the cameras. 15 minutes later, I was just, like, with my dick out in the, in the middle of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I could never do it. I could never do it. But the thing is TV. Ba- it's not TV. Okay. You can tell me. Okay, I'll tell. I'm done with the question. Okay, you're done with the question. Okay. 2000, uh, I, 1999, uh-huh. I came to America to play basketball. Okay. I had a scholarship to play basketball in Nebraska. Okay. Okay. And there's a small school in Nebraska. Sure. Division two school. I wasn't good enough to. Real be. quick, I don't know what that means. Division two is that. It's pretty good. Division one is the best. Division one is is the best. Okay. Division one leads you to the NBA. Okay. I was division two, which is good enough. Sure. To have a scholarship and to have an experience, not enough to be pro in America. Okay. Played on division two school here, and then I saw stand up, on TV, those, Comedy Central presents. Best. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Louis C.K., Ted Alexandro, mm. and uh, Ted was one of my favorites oh, of all time. I still, I still think he's amazing. Yeah, I still think. I hope he watches this because I. Th- he won't. He is amazing. But well, we can okay, tell him. So tell him, tell him that we are saying. <laughs> I think he's great. Uh, Brian Regan. Re- oh, these are the best specials, man. Jim Gaffigan. Yes. Jim. Jim is the best. Yeah. Oh, Jim is amazing. So I watched those, and I was like, "This is so good because you know, it's it's comedy, but also." They're themselves on stage. Mm-hmm. I know it's common for you guys because you have been doing this for, I don't know, 60 years, maybe even more. But the comedy that we used to have 
And we still have in Brazil. In Latin, not only in Brazil, but in like in Latin countries, are the one like rubber the bubble, and the guy has a, a wig, you know, and a puppet, and, a, and then some girl's tits are out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I watch a lot of Spanish. Always TV. tits. Yeah, always tits. <laughs> A lot of characters impersonating like politicians and, yeah. and very noisy and songs and tan, 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 tan. there's always. I would kill in Brazil. Huh? I would kill. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you do characters, but you you you, you could do well. <laughs> and so then uh, I saw those guys being themselves. Hi, my name is Jim Gaffigan, and this is what I think about yeah. life. Yeah. It's like that's so interesting because. I am. I was. I was graduated in journalism. Mm -hmm. Already graduated in journalism because when I went to play basketball here, I was already graduated in college in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I lied about my transcripts. It's another story. But basically, if I, if I told, if I have told them that I was already graduated, I wouldn't have a chance to play basketball. So I gave them my transcripts and I played dumb for a few years. <laughs> like I don't know this. So you already graduated, and I you was, told them you didn't. I, I didn't. That's I hilarious. gave them my transcripts. That's fine. My high school transcripts. And I was like, yeah, I've never been to college. I had to work. I live in a third world country, and, but I was already graduating in journalism. That's hilarious. But then I was, I, I, I went back to Brazil after uh, college here, and I was like, this is amazing because I want to do comedy. I have been doing. I have been writing comedy for a while, and uh, and I'm not. I don't have this talent of the the wig and. I'm more like a. To I like it's not a talent. It's a wig. Yeah. You just didn't. You just got to get a wig. <laughs> That's all you need. The wig do. is enough. Yeah. But go ahead. Good makeup. <laughs> a good wig. Yeah, and a puppet. You need a you puppet. You a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> and a tit. And some tits. <laughs> tits. And some tit. <laughs> yeah. So when I went back to Brazil, I was like, "This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to try this thing called stand up." Mm -hmm. So I moved from my city. I used to live in a small city. I went to. Is this boring? This you tell me. If it's boring, it's like that part is boring, and then I jump. Let me tell you this. Don't ever question it. Okay. I'm in the zone I'm right sorry. Now. Okay. I'm perfect. loving it. Perfect. So I went, I moved from my small city that I used to live called Porto Alegre. Small city was like a, a million people. But then I moved to Sao Paulo, the big city. Mm -hmm. 15 million people. The whole world is in Sao Paulo. I moved there and I was like, I want to do this thing called stand-up. Right. Nobody knew. what Because there was no stand-up in Brazil. So I met a few people, like four or five people that knew what stand-up was. Mm -hmm. Because that was before YouTube. It was 2004. Mm. Okay? And I was like, I want to do this thing. And a few people know what I was talking about. And we started doing stand-up. But there was no reference. We couldn't watch stand-up. Mm -hmm. There was no way to watch stand-up. The only reference that we had of stand-up at that time was the opening of Seinfeld. Sure. Every Seinfeld episode. Yeah. Bang, 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 yeah, bang, yeah. Bang, 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 and then was like. A little stand-up in the beginning. So I remember the first video they were like promoting stand-up was like, have you ever guys watched oh, Seinfeld? Yeah. Uh, oh, you, you no know that? No internet. No internet. Just fucking VHS tapes of old comedy specials. We I had those. It. Oh, you had those? Yeah, I had, the, I had okay. those on tape. Oh, nice. But go ahead. So all of a the sudden there was a CD. I don't know. Maybe you guys are not that old, but a long time ago you, you were not watching DVDs. You had a CD with like. Yeah, people know what CDs are. Yeah, CDs. <laughs> You're showing. It was me. like, <laughs> yeah. it was like this, yeah. but like this. But yeah. that, but 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 instead of just putting the CD and you you see the video, it had like AVI files uh -huh. with videos. Yes. So there was like a list of AVI files, and then we would watch. So there was like twelve Comedy Central presents, and we would watch those to get reference to try to understand more about the, the art form. We started doing stand up in two thousand three, two thousand four, and when YouTube started mm -hmm. then people are like oh look at these guys right 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 because we had s uh, street jokes yeah yeah that would take five minutes to get to the punchline sure yeah 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 remember Norm like does a lot of that kind of stuff okay too. like that kind of like i love it so perfect funny. it's good yeah. it's awesome but our jokes that sometimes you get a little bit too old you already sure. heard that joke so what we brought was like one clip on YouTube. It was actually before YouTube because I had this joke. We got viral uh -huh. through email. Right. That, I don't know if original. that was original. Yes. Is it? Yeah, in America was the same? Sending this shit. It's like, yo, check this video, blah, blah, blah. Memes. You got to see this. Memes. Old school. Old school viral was through. Like like the monkey yep. taking shit off and smelling. Still the funniest video on the internet. Falling. <laughs> Still the funniest video on the internet. You would send those videos. Yes. Through email. Dude, so, South Park got famous through VHS tapes. Everyone VHS? just passed. 
around oh, the first episode of fucking South Park, and that was viral before viral. The same with the UFC. Really? The oh, U yeah. Mixtapes and shit. People would send each other like those VHS tapes with, mm -hmm. with UFC, and they got famous. So, but then YouTube popped up. Yeah. And now there was a place for us to upload those little clips. Right. But if you think about it, people would wait four minutes for the punchline, and we... And I, in a, in a one minute and 15 seconds, would have seven punchlines. Oh, okay. So you weren't doing that. You were. So I wasn't doing showing, street jokes. You I were was showing doing your, but Yes, you were doing your real stand -up. Because we were right. doing like a small bar or something. Right. But then we upload a few of those clips. There was like five or six clips. They got really, really big in Brazil. And people started to show up in the, in the bar to watch us. So all of a sudden, we have like. 150 people watching us every every Saturday. Wow. So it became something. But it wasn't popular. Right. You know? Because, you know, TV was the thing. You need TV. Right. So then someone watched me. And they're like, I like this guy. Right. L it's never happened to me. No, it never happened. No one has ever watched me when I like this guy. No, it never happened. They always <laughs> just go, yeah, who's next? <laughs> Who's the this guy's great filler? Bring the next This one. is the appetizer. Yes. That's what they call me, the appetizer. You're not. You're, you're being, you're being <laughs> So you get liked. The guy likes you. Some Someone guy. liked me and they're like, brought me in a meeting. What do you want to do? They brought you a wig. They didn't they didn't have a wig. They liked the fact that I wasn't wearing a wig. Yeah. They pulled my hair, no wigs. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like this guy. Yeah. So they're like, what do you want to do on TV? Uh-huh. And I was like, I wanna do comedy mm -hmm. and journalism. That's what I wanted. Whoa, okay. That would be. Uh, I want. I want the. Are we talking like a John Stewart type thing? Uh, I don't think. I don't know. I, I didn't know it's John Stewart. I'm not saying you're. A thief. I think the reference. <laughs> no, no. I think the reference was more like weekend update. Okay. Kind okay. of thing. All right, right, right. That's right, what right. I wanted to do. Like have yeah. this, like a, like a like a uh, uh, TV news with like jokes Great. and stuff. So I did a pilot and they liked it, but it was like, yeah, there's no space for this, but I, we like you. So then was. There was an Argentinian format that went to Brazil mm -hmm. called CQC. Okay. It was called, uh, like, like, I don't know. I don't know how to translate it. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But it was a mix between uh, The Daily Show and The View. Okay. Stories on the streets in a panel of, like, three guys discussing those stories and stuff. So that show was really, like, like, was something that nobody have ever seen because th that's not the comedy that we that we used to have here. Right. So that show became really popular in a small network, and I started to tour the country. In Argentina? No, no, no. The format was From Argentina. From Argentina, but you're in Brazil. So they had th that format in, like, okay. Israel, Italy. It's so stupid. It's the same language in Argentina and no, Brazil? No, uh, they, they speak uh, Spanish. We speak Portuguese. Ah, okay. We don't speak Spanish. Okay. I got you. If you speak slow, yeah, yeah. Spanish, I kind of, I can understand what you're right, saying. Right, 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 right. But it's not the same language. I got you. It's a completely okay. different thing. So the show blows up. The show was a huge success. In what years is? This was 2000. It started, I think, it's 2007. Okay, so 2007. Huge, huge. Traveling, okay. making money. All right. Ah. Uh, jail yet? Not jail. Okay, no not jail, jail yet. Not jail. Sexual allegations yet? Uh, I didn't ask you about that. But not, not sexual allegations. Yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not we yet. still have time. The day's not over yet. <laughs> we could go downstairs right now and make things happen. Of we course. We could do the checklist. There's some old people at the <laughs> olive tree. <laughs> Fuck those old people. Yeah. So I started doing the show. Mm -hmm. I was the, the controversial guy. Okay. The guy who does the, the hardcore jokes. Right. That was the clown, the host, and that was the one with jokes. Edgy or just like edgy, edgy. Uh, topical? Edgy and topical. Okay. You know? About the news, about the, uh, about the stories, and everything else. People really like me. Sure, I love you. Yeah. It's pretty easy. But yeah. it was a little different. On, on the show, I was the asshole. Okay. Okay? Not the asshole. People like me. The but bad boy. Yeah, I was the bad boy. The bad boy. I leather was jacket? the bad boy. Did you wear a leather jacket? No, I didn't. No, it was all suits. Nah. No? You should have worn a leather jacket. We look, we look like, like fucking 
Jackasses. Suits also, I don't know, uh, uh, fucking Reservoir Dogs. Yes, that was That's a reference. That's pretty bad boy. Let me show you how we would uh, wear. I don't know if you can show this. Can we show that? I don't know. Who cares? Oh, this, is, uh, this, this was us. Oh, like mobsters. Yeah, well, no, this is like Reservoir Dogs. Okay. This is like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you could probably show the camera. Like, uh, can I? Matter. Yeah, who you knows? cannot see this. Nobody this matters. camera sucks. No, it's a great looking camera. No one has to do more investment here. Don't the close up. Get we need us a close fired. up. Okay. So <laughs> then for years, this show was a huge hit. And I started doing a journalism show at the same time. Mm -hmm. So more like a vice sure. kind of thing. Me experiencing different lives. Right. Uh, uh, dominatrix like whipping my ass. Oh, and funny. I was living different experiences. So I was huge. Yeah. Huge. 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 And then, mm. something, I feel like a ball's coming. Yes. Oh, what happened? Well. Allegation time. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the show got too big. Uh-huh. I was too big. Right. And with great, great power. Yes. <laughs> come great responsibility. Yeah. And I couldn't care less about the responsibility. Okay. I was like, I'm this guy. Fuck it. This is how I build. Big ego? No, I... Because you don't have a big ego. Uh, you never come across those. No, uh, uh, I'm 46 now. Sure. You no, know? I don't have a big ego enough to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. But I want stuff. You believe in yourself. I believe, oh, I think I'm the best one. Right. I believe in myself to the point of that's, look at what I'm doing. It's a hard thing. I mean, whatever. I battle with this. I have you half do. of my brain. Is you were the greatest comedian who ever lived. Okay. And the other half is you're you've up. never been good. Nothing is ever good. You've wasted your time because that other part of your brain is crazy. So it's a constant. You get any day of the week. Who win? Every day is different. Oh, okay. Like there's part of me that goes, Phew. when I'm on stage and I'm killing, I'm like I'm the best. Anytime I'm on stage, even when I'm bombing on stage, I'm like, I'm the fucking best. Okay. But as soon as I get off and I look at my bank account and I look at the because the thing that scares me is I don't know reality. I'm sorry to just take this off. Please, no, no, no. I, I don't. I'm always afraid of Fight Club. So let me tell you real quick. Let me quick aside. Please. 2004, I'm doing comedy with this comic, this guy who goes on stage, bombs his ass off. Worst thing I've ever seen. He's horrible. Looks at me and goes, follow that. He was so <laughs> believed that he was amazing that I went, if he thinks he's amazing, how do I know that I am? I could be, this could be Fight Club. I could have Tyler Durden. <laughs> it built in me this fucking fear that's like, holy shit, I don't know what I am. So I, I look at the numbers on what I have, and it's like, ah, you kind of broke. Uh, you don't really have the credits. Uh, you don't have like people being like, this guy's the fucking best. All you do have is you kill on stage. You do. And I, I'm, a, I'm proof. I'm a, I'm a witness. Oh, thanks. You do. Um, you don't have to. You, you know that. I don't know. Yeah. No, I know I can do good. You can see when people but are not hacks. Laughing. There's always a guy in my voice that knows how to reverse it. I know a lot of really bad comics who do really well on stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I'm very worried that I'm just this medium comedian. Mm -hmm. Not good, not bad, but I'm not special. I'm just this appetizer mm -hmm. comedian. And uh, so when I'm on stage and I'm killing it, I'm like, I have a new joke. I'm like, this is great. But there is a guy constantly, Larry, I call him. Who goes in my head and goes, You're not good enough. You've never been good oh, enough. This guy has a name. Yeah. That, this is big. I mean, I talk about this on the podcast. The therapist told me that. She was like, Name him so that you can hear him and you can tell him to shut up. Do you, would you rather be successful with a shitty comedy? No. Okay. No. If you had I a already choice, did good comedy. If you had a choice, I, I would be a shitty comedian, very successful, or I'm going to be a good comedian. With not that much success. Enough for you to survive. I can answer that question. Okay. I would rather be rich knowing I'm doing the best I can. If I am a shitty comedian, but I know I'm working as hard as I can, and I really am pushing the envelope to the best I can, mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. Okay. But if I'm on stage going, uh, if I, I can't be one of those guys who walks up and is just like, the vaccine's not real, and I know the vaccine is real. <laughs> You know what I mean? We have a lot of friends who are like that. Uh -huh. We know guys who do oh, yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I can't ever be selling what out what I believe. But if what I believe just isn't that good or that funny, but I'm still rich, I would do that. Okay. I'd like to, right now. It makes sense. I'm very proud of what I do on stage. I'm very proud of who I am as a comedian. 
and I've told you this before, I think, but I'm like, all I need to do now is just find money. And when I look at it that way, it's like, oh, that's okay, because I don't care. If this is all I ever get comedically, fame-wise, that's fine. All I need to do now is just find money. And if you think about it that way, it's like, that's not too hard. I just got to find money. But I've been doing comedy since 2001, and I haven't really had that big uh, win. Was that a moment in your, in your career that you made money? So, yeah. So 2018, uh, the one thing that I ever got, one thing. I've had a lot of good things. Okay. But the one thing that changed it for me was I made $7,000 a year in 2017. 2018, I was a writer on the break with Michelle Wolf, mm -hmm. and I was opening for Michelle Wolf on the road. We wrote for the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and I think I made $150,000 that year. Awesome. I went from $7,000 to $150,000. Um, and then since then, it's all been very medium and fine, but um, I expected to get like writing jobs after that, but everything just fucking it didn't really work out. I don't know, and it's fine. I'm happy. I just don't know what I was I don't know what it is I feel like there's this blind spot that I'm not seeing mm -hmm. and I wonder if every comedian is just like yeah you fucking suck but you're really nice so we'll never tell you the truth no that's not true that's not true the thing you're not asking for advice or anything I always want advice you okay you can always tell me this stuff I love it there is uh, there is a process that people are following right now mm -hmm. that's it's not the the most fun but the whole thing with social media Algorithm. and you don't Video you have posting. to find your way to do it you yeah. know but but it's kind of crazy because uh you don't necessarily need to uh put your best self there right you know no you have to put your sellable self there you know that my example. Let me tell you. No, my I'm example. listening. I'm just my, my example. No, no, no. Myself. Let me tell you my example. And we're gonna get to where the crash. By the way, I just want people okay, to know. Okay. We need to get back to the crash. Oh, no, we are gonna be. We'll be back to the crash. So, I'm. I have on on my. I have a huge following now from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I built through my jokes about language. Are not the ones that I'm most proud of. Yeah. You know, because you can get stuck there. I mean, I, I told you that before. You know, my I wanna, videos, the ones that hit aren't the ones I'm the most proud of. You know, I don't want to be the guy who is like, oh, you say this and we say that. I don't want to be that guy. I have much better material, but I know that that material is not going to perform as good as this one because I think I found my niche. When people go to watch me live, they are going to see the good stuff yeah. and they're going to like it. But the one that are going to be viral i kind of figure out the ones that work for me mm -hmm. for my voice yeah so it's not that i think they're well written sure. they're good they fit me they're not the ones that i'm most proud of of course but, the ones that got viral for you it can be the ones that are not you're, you're not more, more, most proud of but they are yours right it comes from you it's come from your creativity so, so you don't have to be ashamed of it right but i think we analyze too much well, I have a theory on this. Okay. Sorry. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, the thing you're showing on Instagram, that's not your comedy. That's the trailer. That's the trailer to get them to come see yes. the movie. Mm -hmm. Here is the short, hey, look at this. Hey, I think I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. Here, when I put out these clips, it's like, what's likable? I want someone to go, I like this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now come watch my special. Like you is not enough for them to leave their houses. Likeability? I don't think so. What is enough to make? Because I thought that's that's what I'm banking on. You are very likable. You are How very likable. How do I get to leave their house? I think you need to find. Okay, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. Something that people are gonna see you and think that you're different. They're gonna fall. The hook. The fa the fact that you are likable. They're gonna be with you for the rest of their lives because you are a nice guy. They're gonna love you. Oh, they're gonna always gonna love you. But what? What's the hook? I, what's the hook? What's my hook? Do I? Have I don't a hook? know. What's exactly. Hook? That's why I I'm don't drowning. know. Anthony DeVito, he's Italian. <laughs> I don't know. Max is fucking my wife. <laughs> That's the hook. Something that makes you. Pressure takes his shirt off. Yeah. It's a okay, hook. Okay, it's a hook. Shitty hook, but it's a hook. Okay? Yeah, you know what? It's a hook. No, I'll no, take any hook. Not only the the, the shirt. He found the He's the party boy. Party boy. You know, I know it sucks. But if you push a hook You're too hard, you become You're not doing comedy to look for hooks. You're doing comedy to look for jokes. But I think 
you need to have the, the a, a little a little bit of your Do I mind. find the hook or I just build the hook? I think you build the hook. That's why I got to get a wig. You maybe you need a wig. Right. So but let me ask you this though. I'm on stage. You find the hook. You find you find you can build something that you think it's it's you. I don't know what it is. I'm just theorizing. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, I mean, you're I don't not. even speak English. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, it's funny. I would watch Mark Norman. He would constantly wear the same jacket. And I was always like, what the hell are you doing? And you go, oh, that becomes the Bart Simpson uniform. Mm -hmm. It becomes part of the thing. See. And it's all. And sometimes you don't build the hook, but if you just constantly keep adding and not subtracting, you know, like I shaved. It's like I should just look the same all of the time, become Coca-Cola. Everyone sees you enough, and then oh, your hook becomes this thing. I don't know what the hook is. I know it sucks what I'm, what I'm saying. I don't know if I'm... I'm a dad. I don't... Dadcomedy.com. Oh, that's God, a hook. Kill that, okay, that's but, fine. But that's a hook. Yeah. I don't think. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like like shoes. It's a controversial guy. It's a party guy, and everything is like. Oh, I, I I he found his his thing, and also, all people that we are quote uh, saying right now, they are great joke writers. They deliver. You right. know, you right. deliver. Right. We do it. We do it. We are doing it. Right. So, but what are gonna make people leave their houses? To watch you, right? And I think you're. Oh my gosh, I'm, this is a coaching session. This is horrible. I, I, this is perfect. I enjoy this. It's very difficult. I'm never gonna to find a hook when you are a white American man, right? Because your hook, my hook. No vaccines came, are fake. No, yeah, <laughs> that, that's a hook. They're hooks. That's a hook. There are hooks. There's a hook. So my came naturally because I was writing those things at the beginning. And so it came out, oh, people are like uh, connecting with these things that I'm talking about, language, and all of a the sudden they are coming here and they're seeing more and I can show more, but they are with me already. So that was the hook. So that's what I think. That's what I, I mean. I would, I would pay someone to be like, this is how we're going to market your social media. This is what we like about you. This is how we push this. This is how we push you. This year, you know, like right now, it's like you're a dad, you're a, you're a sweet guy, you're all, because right now, I believe. Maybe that's a hook. Maybe it's maybe a hook. Maybe that is a hook. Maybe you, have, maybe you have to make this more clear. I think I have to make clear that I'm a medium, not medium, but like, for me, I believe there's right wing and there's left wing. Comedy in America okay. has always been, uh, you know, super liberal okay. or maybe conservative. I, don't, I mean, or it's been liberal, but now it's liberal and it's conservative. And I think the true punk rock, edgy, is being a guy who goes, yeah, I think a little bit of them are right, a little bit of them are right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's weird that, like, medium moderate to yeah. me is punk rock. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I, I mean, like, I if I'm talking about hook, but if I could sell something about myself, it would be empathy. It would be like, hey, what the fuck? You know, like, here is a middle of the road, very grounded theory that is funny. That's what I want to push. That's the hook! That's the hook! <laughs> That's the hook. Well, that's why most of my jokes usually come. Most of my jokes always come from love. They always come from empathy yes. and understanding awesome. other people and Orphan. not hating it. So I guess I could push. Yeah, I got to make a video. It's like, here he is, Mr. Empathy. How about we're both right? <laughs> Everyone's got it. Yeah. Anyway, 2007, you're top of the world. You're fucking killing it. I was doing and really then well. something happens. Yeah. What happens? Well, I was already... Uh, I'm. I'm not, I feel bad that I'm getting myself in the middle of your business now. Am what are you I, talking about? I'm interviewing I, you. Yeah. Yeah. This is my Barbara Walters. Okay. Okay. Also, it's an interesting. It's interesting. Is is it? Yeah. I mean, too many podcasts. It's so funny because people who really want to know uh -huh. listening to this right now are going, "Come on, I want to fucking hear!" And I keep assigning us. <laughs> but I just started listening to podcasts more, uh -huh. and something I hate is something that I do, which is like the constant jokes cutting off, cutting off. Okay. Not finishing. Okay. Sometimes I listen to a podcast and I'm like, no, I want to know what that guy was saying. Yeah. I want to know this story. But you know what's crazy? Interesting. Everything that we are talking, we are talking for 25 minutes with a hook. We have a hook. We got a hook. We have a hook. We got the gun. You know, they are listening because we found the hook. Dude, it literally starts off. I have no idea. That's this is TV. Yeah. I have no idea who you are. Yes. Everyone's people listening to this are going. Something clearly happened. At some point, he went to jail, and we won't give it to them no. until the end. Okay. <laughs> no, but go ahead. So 2007. 2000, 2007, show started doing well. Yeah. 
I was already doing some controversial jokes, jokes that people didn't want to do. And I was like, do you, do you, don't, you, don't, you don't have the guts to do this like, joke? Like, like rape is I good. Do it. Yeah, all of those. <laughs> I didn't. I got. I got. I got involved in a rape joke that was was controversial too. A few jokes started, you know, bringing me problems. You mm -hmm. know, first I was the guy. Oh, he's oh he's such an edgy guy, yeah. and he kicks the bucket. That's what we say. In, it means you die yeah. in America. Oh yeah, he yeah, kick the bucket means you're dead. <laughs> if he kicked the bucket, you were 85 years old. And you got hit by a kick truck. The bucket, this guy that don't he's care. Kicking the bucket, yeah. Okay, it's like I don't care, and uh, and then. 2011, after a few sequence of jokes that are being reproduced, and I couldn't care less. I loved, also loved the attention. I was having fun. Sure. Because that was me. Yeah, cocaine. And you cocaine? No, I never did. I need, uh, not drugs. Yeah. It's, not, it's not my thing. Then I did a joke uh, on my TV show, on this TV show. That This is what happened, okay? We showed a... Uh, Story that our reporter went on the field and interviewed the singer, the Brazilian singer. She was pregnant. Okay. Oh yeah. She was pregnant. She's hot. She sings like shit. She's uh, like our, our, I would say, our Jennifer Lopez. Sure. Sings like shit. Very hot. Right. Sellable. Big hook. Yes, big hook. That's her hook. So when the camera cuts to us, my friend asked me, "Oh." She's pregnant. Do you think she is still hot? Hilarious. And I said, she's so hot that I would fuck her and her baby. <laughs> eh, that's a pedo joke. <laughs> That'll get you every time, brother. It'll get you every time on Everywhere, that one. Everywhere, every time. I said that joke. People laughed. And, I, and, and people are like, yeah, <laughs> that's not good. But I was like, yeah, let's wait. Let's see what happens. And then... Her husband oh was a very powerful figure in Brazil because he used to own a, a, an agency and production company. He used to run brands. And so they start threatening the show of taking brands out of the TV show. Uh, so he became like a money kind of thing. Cash rules everything around me. It's money. It's money, cash. Yeah, exactly. So after two weeks, they were like, we are going to suspend you for a few weeks and i was like i don't accept wow if you suspend me i'm leaving the show and the guy was like you are angry right we get it you know what let's talk in three weeks yeah three weeks happened i went back i was like i'm leaving the show bro wow i'm staying he was like there's that it doesn't make sense people love you yeah just be a little careful. And I told them something that I believed, and it, be, it, it, turned, it turned out to be true. If we step back with this joke, it's just, if you think about it, it's, it's kind of a silly joke. Everybody laughed. Yeah, yeah, it's about a woman that was pregnant. She got upset. It was more about the, the whole husband being right. mad that bring, bring, brought us problem than the controversy itself, you know? Right. So I told them, we cannot be run. We are the ones who point fingers at politicians. He, we, I used to go to Congress to make fun of politicians and ask them like tough questions and stuff. If we do that now, we are going to show the world that we are sellouts. And in a few months, we are going to be apologizing for everything or, some, or maybe not even doing those jokes. So I don't want to play the game anymore. They're like, no, no, please don't do it. Don't do it. Like I'm resigning. And they're like, yeah, but you have a, a contract. Your contract, so I would have to pay like a million oh. of my money. Right. A million. Yeah. But that's Brazilian money, so it's like 50 American dollars, right? Yeah, that's $12. <laughs> <laughs> that's $12. <laughs> but then it was, it was no, a I'm lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was a lot of, yeah, the, the thing is, if you're a lawyer that gets $15,000 in America, you get 15000 of my money. But if you do the, you know, so $1 million, it's a lot. I know. I was just being an No, insult. but I completely agree. Controversial joke. No, no, no. <laughs> agree. <laughs> you, that will get you canceled. <laughs> but, and then I was like, no, I pay. I yeah. Pay. I'll, I, pay, I'll pay the fee. Wow. And they're like, no, you don't, you, don't, you don't have to pay the fee. We are going to wait for a contract to, be, to run out, and then you leave the station. Of course, because they knew that if I pay the fee, 
I will be free to say whatever wow. I want. So they want to keep me. So they have, they have a little more control of me. I'm not be gonna be like talking shit behind their backs. I wouldn't do it, you know, because sure. they were always very, very good to me. Yeah. Very nice. Even when I left, it was like a very difficult moment for me. Like, I love you guys, but I don't want to play the game anymore. Right. You know, you were always good to me, but I don't want to play this game. So I left the station. Think about it. Stand up started in 2004 in Brazil. Okay, so when that happened. Nobody was defending me. Right. I was a psychopath. <laughs> you know? Yet yeah. This guy yeah. talk about this woman who was pregnant. And you never the got a whole rebuttal. The country hates him right now. And he doesn't want to be on the show. He's leaving the show. This guy is insane. And there's no Twitter yet, right? So you can't even defend yourself online There somewhere. was Twitter. Yes. Okay. Twitter was 2011. It was happening. I could defend myself. But I was like, does that make sense? So for a few months, maybe like a year, I just had fun. I was like, ah, I'm So you were in a good place. I was in an amazing place. Right. Amazing place. Because I felt... Because, here's the thing, uh, Greg. I... The whole country was talking about this shit. Which was kind of crazy. This guy is a comedian. He's on TV. And the whole country is talking about this... Maybe it's a little arrogant for me to say the whole country. We have much better problems, much yeah. worse problems. But it's on people's minds. But uh, people, people are talking about it. Right. You know? But I was like, I, I became a conversation. Nobody was defending me because nobody wanted to defend comedy. Because you guys went through so much shit here in this country with comedy yeah. and trying and talking about freedom of speech. Yeah. And this is a conversation for years. We didn't have that conversation. Right. We are starting to have this conversation now. Wow. 12 years after I had that whole issue. So at that so time. You gotta go back and be like, see, motherfuckers? Yeah. I knew that that would happen <laughs> because I wasn't doing anything wrong. Yeah. I wasn't shitting on my wife. I wasn't killing people. I was doing I was not doing drugs or selling drugs or raping kids. I was doing that. Uh, right. I wasn't doing anything. I was just doing my my job. I was doing the jokes that I was already doing it. So I felt that, you know. History is going to save me. Yeah. After a while, they will figure out that, you know, I'm a good guy. I, I, you know, right. people are going to have much worse problems than I'm having. Right. But I found out that it's kind of crazy, you know. There's a game to be played when you become famous everywhere. Okay. There is a game to be played. You are part of this machine. Someone gave you a card. It's like you're part of yeah. the famous land right but to be in the famous land you need to to you know to be there's some rules follow here. the rules follow the rules follow online if you do some shitty shit apologize people right. are gonna love you because you know we are all human right. so i decided not to apologize i was like I'm not, I'm not doing anything wrong yeah yeah so he was like why don't you fuck why 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 i was like you know what because I was the, fir the first group of stand-up comedians. It was like me and four guys. I think it's important for comedy, for them to know that I'm just a comedian. And I, if I apologize now, I'm not going to be able to do my work. Can we talk about this policy I'm gonna for a second? I'm going to be stuck. I'm going to be stuck. I want to get to a point that this is always something that I battle with constantly, right? Okay. So we're talking about apologies in comedy. So this is something I believe, and I want to get into your. I want to get into what you said. Oh, I have things to say about this. Um, I believe, and I said this to someone on stage. Uh, I did a joke. I do. I would do a lot of pedophilia stuff. You know, okay. that's kind of my bread yeah, and butter. It's your, you know, it's your hook. <laughs> so I was, and this lady was like, she was mad. She was just mad, and she said something. I don't want to hear that, and whatever. And I went, look, you have every right to be offended. Every right, you should be offended. But the way I process pain is through jokes. When 9-11 happened, I watched it. We didn't know what to do. And I remember the first time I heard a jerk joke, I went, oh, okay, now we can talk about it. Rape is something I'm scared of. Rape is something I don't like. If you make it light, then you can talk about it. I believe to me, that's the first process. Now, that's not everyone's process. But if that's not your process, that's okay. But don't take away someone else's process, okay? So if I have a restaurant and you don't like mushrooms, you shouldn't ask the restaurant to not sell mushrooms. They're just not for you. Mm -hmm. That being said, I do more jokes that are general. 
I don't go after people specifically. Okay. Right? So you're doing this joke about a woman specifically. And I say this, and this is not, I'm not saying, if, if I did something, a joke about a woman specifically, I might say to her, if this hurt your feelings, that doesn't make me feel good. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm-hmm. But I'm never going to stop. <laughs> so I don't know where I land on jokes that are too specific people. And Perfect. this is where I want to. Okay. Agree. I completely agree with. I'm not you. disagreeing with what you said. I don't want to. I don't want to see someone hurt. Right. So you know what I did when that whole thing happened before it blew up. Send them an email. Right. I'm sorry. I know you're hurt, but you have to understand just one thing. This is my work. I understand that you're not happy with the joke, and if I hurt your family, or I'm sorry. Right. But don't make me go public and apologize because this is my work, and this is not going to be good. I don't want. That's not an apology. That's a shaming. Yeah. But that people, the guy, the woman, they were not mad at me because of the joke. They were upset with the surroundings. Sure. You know, with uh, people talking about this. And I have no control over it. Right. That's why there's a difference between you hurting that person and... uh, what is the name of the, the tiny guy, the, the, the actor? Danny here. DeVito. No, no, the, uh, fuck, the, 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 the Anthony comedian, DeVito. the comedian who tiny? was doing the Oscar. He didn't do the Oscar. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. <laughs> the tiny comedian. The, the tiny comedian. Yeah. <laughs> he is so big that if someone is hurt by his joke, oh, that's going to be published everywhere. Right. And some other people are also going to be hurt. And people are going to take that joke that he did on stage, take out of context and put in a publication. And people are going to read your joke. And if people read our jokes, we are fucking assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. They just read. They, no don't, they don't see you laughing, being ironic, being sarcastic. It's crying to just take a joke and put it on a publication. So when you have power, mm-hmm. you know, and... Being famous is power. You have this responsibility to please others. And we, comedians, we don't want to please everybody. We are, maybe we do want, but we are not willing to pay the price of being so likable that you lose your essence. Right. You're, you know? You're trying to make everyone happy. You're not being creative. You're not going to be yourself. You are going to be exactly like every other guy it is. Also, if you're trying to make everyone happy, and I'm sure we have friends, when you're trying to make someone happy, you get so worried about making them happy that you don't tell them the truth. Yes. And you end up doing more damage of than course, good. Of course, yeah. You know? I agree. I agree. But when you have this fame, you know, you're so big that a little thing always blew up out of proportion. And it's a, that was my fight, my internal fight. And I think you had that when you have this conversation with this woman. It was like, do I keep being free and creative? Or I, I, be, I, I fight to be huge. You're well, never me- going to be huge and free. I mean, pedophilia... Is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's nope. a great way to pass the time. But right there, you write that down. Okay. So Greg just said pedophilia is a great way to pass the See? time. I do not believe it, but it is something I hate. So you degrade the thing you hate mm-hmm. to, to make you able to talk about it. Yes. Now, I love. I agree. I agree. I'm trying to release this special on 9 11. Mm-hmm. You know, people are not going to enjoy that. People are not going to enjoy the trailers being like something's dropping on 9 11. People aren't going to like that. Right? And if they came up to me and they go, because this is the thing that bothers me, they go, the victims. And you go, but were they hurt? Were people hurt? And if you hear things like that, are you hurt or you just feel like you should be hurt? So then you say you're hurt. Are you? Like, I don't, it's a thing I don't understand about this shit. Like, oh, most of people just say they're hurt because they want to but- show that they, they want to show this uh, feeling that. Everybody has, but I don't think everybody's hurt. No, but I'm going to be real here, and I bet you can relate this because I think we talked about it once before. I had a kid, and now every movie I watch that has a kid dying, oh, yeah. I can't watch it. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't tell them not to make those movies, yeah. but it triggers me, and I go like, oh, I had a woman at the Comedy Cellar during my set. I don't remember what it was. She got up, 
and she started crying and she left. And I saw her and I was like, you know, the management was talking to her and I was like, oh my God, was there something they said? She was like, I don't even know what the joke was. And she was like, it's not you. I have a thing. When I hear this, it brings up stuff and I just wanted to walk out, but I'm not, she was not complaining. What was the subject? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I don't even remember. But something hit her and she started crying and That's she walked out. That's how remarkable that interaction was. You don't remember what this <laughs> Well, because I don't even know. Because by the time I got off stage, she was still outside. She was crying to a manager. And the manager was like, not being, they were, it was the best interaction. Uh, I remember it was Val and they were just talking and she was like, I don't want a refund. I'm not whatever. I'm not, I'm not saying they shouldn't be doing this. I just know I have a thing. Okay. And my thing triggered me. And so I just stepped out and she's like, just give me some time and I'll go back in and watch the other comics. I don't remember what it was. And I was like, she handled that the best way possible. Mm. She was very mature. She was very like, mature. no, I just have a thing. Like I have a thing about children now where I'm like, you say a thing, it triggers me. But I guess that's the thing is, I guess, I'm mean, answering my own question here is I guess it's like, yeah, but I don't think that you shouldn't, like, dude, Stranger Things season three or last season opens with like a school of kids being murdered. And I was like, I can't watch that. I told I, you, I, I went to the movie to watch It. Yeah. The first scene. It for my English speaking people. Push, yeah. yeah. The, the clown pushes a kid to the dumps, the, the fucking. In the sewer. And I left the, the, the movie. <laughs> Four minutes, I left. I was like, I'm not going to watch right. this clown killing kids. And then I was like, no, this is a movie about clown that kill kids. Why am I? What am I? <laughs> Why was I here? Everybody knows that. I was like, well. <laughs> Why did so I read the done. description? Yeah. Right. So what is yeah, I our Puppies and kids. You can yeah. murder an old lady. I couldn't care less. Right. Don't punch a kid. But we sit here and we say, like, don't shit. Every topic is off, whatever. But on my Instagram page, people will just comment, you suck, fuck you. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, that hurts my feelings. Oh, uh, it does? I mean, sometimes it get, uh, It doesn't get me so much anymore, if I'm being honest. I just block and I don't care because I am confident with okay. what I am. Yeah. What do, it doesn't hurt me what they said because I don't believe they're right. But what hurts me is I go, this is society. Human race is like this. That there's just, it hurts me that they're so hurt. I go, there's just people out there who are so fucking hurt that they need to just lash out at people that they, like, I had a guy leave a comment. This is like, do you really think that? That's empathy. That's. Well, yeah, I mean, I had a guy leave a comment that went something like, I remember when you used to be funny. It's been a really long time. And I went, what kind of human being writes that? <laughs> it's somebody who's hurting. Every bully you've ever had was hurting. Yeah. And so when you see that, I go, so when I see them leave these comments, I go, Jesus Christ, all of America is fucking hurting. Yes. And that makes me sad. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes right? Sense. Yeah, I understand. I have a thick skin for like... Well, you were famous. People, are, Yeah, you have to develop that. Yeah. But, but also, I think what taught me was... Uh, I did this TV show that I was telling you about, the journalism show. So mm -hmm. I saw... I saw too much. I right. saw lives. I saw people living in the middle of the garbage. I would like... I saw so like crying people that lose their kids and they were crying. I saw uh, this whole mountain that just collapsed and killed like and I get people like dragging bodies out of. I saw so much that I'm like, you know, life is amazing. Right. For me to be worried about even about that thing that people are talking shit about me, it's like I'm not gonna worry about this. Well, and also, when you're sad, if that ruins your day. Be sure that you are going to ruin other people's days. No, that's the wor absolute worst advice. No, no. What I'm, what I'm saying, <laughs> no, I don't think I, I made myself understand. <laughs> if you get hurt with that comment, if that hurts you, you are going to ruin right. people's around you day, you know? Yeah. Because you're going to be mad and you're not going to treat well your wife and you're not going to play with your kid. And I felt that when everything was happening, I was in the middle of the hurricane that I needed to feel strong because I would drag people down because everybody was worried about me. If all of a sudden I am feeling it, I'm like, my dad, what, I, I, there were so many stories of me having, a, uh, oh, he's going to go to jail. Right. Oh, he's going to go to jail because of this, because of the lawsuit. I had so many different lawsuits. Right. Not only because of that joke, because of a lot of things. So every time a lot you just can't brush over that. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, a lot of a lot of a lot of different uh, little jokes that I did. Oh, okay. Someone got. Uh, it's always. It's and in Brazil, can you go to jail for jokes? Is you have a free uh, speech shit? Then, it, well, 
here's the thing. You guys have the First Amendment, which is like you can say whatever you fucking want. Yeah. But you also cannot be racist. You cannot be homophobic. And You can be. You won't you go to can. jail for it. You won't? Oh, you, can't, okay. you, can, you can't go to jail for being racist. Can, I think you can go to jail being racist, I think. You can, go to, you can go to jail if you incite violence. Okay. But if I just walk around screaming racist shit, that's not You can do it. No? Look at every comedian you know. Yeah. They're wildly... Uh, no, not every comedian. <laughs> but no, no, you no. can... I mean, I'd have to... Whatever. But no, you can, you can go to jail if okay. you do something that causes someone harm. But you can be... I lost money. Racist. I lost money. A lot of money. Yeah. I lost a lot of money with lawsuits. I lost lawsuits... And that made me lose a lot of money. And you'd be at the, you'd be at court for those two. I lose time. Went to court a few times, yes. Uh, and I lost money. I had to pay those lawsuits. You know that that was the most annoying thing. But you I were... found a way to fucking right. You know I'm creative, so I made those lawsuits bring me money too. So I made fun about the lawsuits, and I made a show about the lawsuit. So at the end of the day. It was all good. But I lost a lot, Greg. I lost a lot. I lost sponsors. I lost uh, opportunities. I lost. I was fucking huge. Yeah. And I, the choice that I made, because I made the choice of not apologizing, of not playing the game, I made that choice. And I'm comfortable with that choice. But I know that I lost a lot. Lost money. I lost, like, movies, series, uh, like, uh, ad, uh, ads. Right. No company wants to be attached to me. Right. Now, time has passed and I have companies that, but also like the big, like Nestle and McDonald's and Pepsi Cola, they don't want to sponsor a guy like me. Right. Because they think I'm insane. Is that stuff all but at the over same now? Time, but at the same time, they are willing to sponsor this fucking asshole who's cheating on his wife for fucking years. Let me tell you, let me tell you, you know? And... But he plays the game. He apologizes. He's all like, oh, my God, I'm such a, uh, you know, I did a mistake. And I never hurt anyone. And I just believe in what I do. And I paid a very high price. Let it's me... a lie. Of course. It's a lie. And that annoys me a lot. So when I see a fucking asshole falling down like fucking Ellen DeGeneres, I was so happy with that shit. Because everybody thinks, oh, it's such an amazing person. It's not. There's, right. there's, there's witness. Yeah. You know, like Lisa. I don't know if she's an asshole or not. But when those things happen, I don't judge like, oh, I don't. Nice. Good, good. Because there's so <laughs> many good people that people think are fucking assholes. And there's so many assholes. That people think are amazing. Because comedy is all about being likable. It's all about being likable. So if you're famous, you have to be likable. But a lot of these people just figured out how to be likable. And they figured out how to be famous. Yeah. Rarely is the first thing they figured out was how to be funny. Yes. You might want to switch to Patreon soon. Okay. Um, I want to uh, throw one thing your way. And if you have time, you can stick around. If not, uh, you no know, big deal. Um, I'll stick around. I Do you want me to stick around? I don't ever want you okay. away. Okay. Right. I'm not even kidding when I say I have so what you. At the cellar, there's like a handful of people where I just get excited. Nice. You. Uh, Hamilton. Yeah, Ryan that's Hamilton, uh, the sweetest guys in the world. I yes. love talking to him. We have great love, conversations. Love him. Daniel Simon. Maybe he's a fucking asshole. We don't know that. And I'll tell you this. There's <laughs> one guy I know. You never know. That is, that is that such is, a great guy that I'm like, ah, <laughs> I've met some very good people. No, he's not. He's a very nice guy. <laughs> Daniel Simonson. Daniel. Great, funny, super good. funny. Mike Rowland, great, funny guys. Yes. Um, now, here's the thing. I was having a conversation with like a, a super liberal friend, okay. and we were just talking randomly, but they were like, if Louis wanted to put out your special, Louis C.K., would you do it? I went, yes, absolutely. I would, of course, absolutely. Anybody who wants to put out my special, I will put it, I can fucking do it, <laughs> right? Because then they were like, what do you mean? But he's got the blah, 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 blah. And I went, okay, let me ask you this. Would you be more comfortable if Amazon put out my special? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, now do you think that Amazon, the company, is better? They've just been better to humanity than Louis? People in Amazon are peeing in bottles. <laughs> Because they don't have time to go to the bathroom. But the insanity that people will cancel you for working with Louis, yeah. but not Amazon or McDonald's or any of these giant companies that are destroying the world on a massive scale is fucking bananas. What did, he t what did they say? Laugh. Because this is what we were friends. It was like a friend conversation, oh, okay. right? They were like, Jesus Christ, you're fucking right. Okay. Actually, what she said was um, I, she will never begrudge a comedian um so if 
someone is rich helping out someone not rich. It should never be the not rich person saying, I'm not going to do this. Okay, yeah. You know, it's like, take their money. Uh-huh. You can't be making those choices. If, if someone said, hey, man, how come you let Bill Cosby without your special? I'm like, I got kids to feed. I'll take Bill Cosby's money. I don't give a fuck. I don't know if I would take Bill Cosby. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, okay. All right, we're going to switch to Patreon. Okay. Um, we're going to we're gonna talk about the questions that I asked uh, Max in the beginning of this episode. I'm going to throw them at Rafi. It's going to be a little lighter. If you are, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Raf, where do they find you? Where do they find your stand-up? Where do they find Rafi you? Comedy, my Instagram. Just go there. I'm, I'm there. I'm, that's the, key, that's yeah. the thing that goes everywhere. Hashtag, uh, the, 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 at Rafi Comedy. It's enough. It was a yeah, it's perfect. amazing pleasure. First of all, yes, man. I'm so happy. I wanted you to do this for so long, and uh, I don't think I ever asked you. I thought I, think I, I, I think I told the story, yeah, right? Oh, you're going to have to do a little self-esteem thing. That was, was a great a good, episode. It was a good story, this right? Was, I loved it. Oh, nice. I loved it. That was so great. Good, good. Um, and you are just such a great guy and such a funny guy. We work together with the seller. Come, you if you see the seller, come see him. And Max is here. Max yes. Marcus. Max Marcus Comedy. Yes, that's all social media. Marcus the comedian. Yeah. Oh my. Follow me on Threads. Amazing. Follow him on Threads. <laughs> that's that's your plug. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's horrible. Single-handedly carrying Threads on his shoulders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, guys, if you want to hear more, if you're enjoying this, or if you just want to support. Go to patreon.com, the Greg Stone Zone. Uh, we have a ton of video, old episodes of the Rad Dude Cast, old episodes of Friday Night Greg. There's some Night Cream live shows on there. Uh, there's a ton of stuff. Also, join the, there is a um, Discord that I'm going to be opening up to everyone. Uh, go on my Instagram. I'll put all the information on the Instagram on how to join that. I have a, a, a good a fan who's great. He's going to be helping with that, um, I think, because I don't know how to do it because I'm an idiot. Uh, but. I love you all. We'll see you guys in two minutes if you switch over to Patreon. Thanks. Bye.